This is the Chapter 3 Lesson 1 video on scatter plots and correlation. And what I want you to think about as we go through this lesson is how can we determine how much of a correlation exists between two variables? That means how can we determine if values of one variable are affecting values of a second variable? Um, so a scatter plot is a graph that has um, one variable, usually the explanatory variable, on the x-axis and the response variable on the y-axis, or at least the values that we think could be explanatory in response. Um, so the explanatory, or what we think is the explanatory, would go on the x-axis, uh, the independent variable, and the y-axis would have the dependent variable or the response variable, the, val the variable we think is changing in response. Um, then from there we can look to see if we can find a positive correlation or a negative correlation uh, between the two values, like some sort of pattern between the, the two values corresponding. So let's look at what we have to look at in the scatter plot to interpret it. So here we have three scatter plots, um, all of different things, and all here because they show different correlations. So a positive correlation, we look for values increasing together, meaning as values of our x-axis here increase, so do values on the y-axis. And that would give us a best fit line that would have a positive slope going from the lower left to the upper right. Uh, a negative correlation would be the opposite. If, the, if as the x-axis, as values here increase, the values on the y-axis decrease. So we'd have a slope of the best fit line going from the upper left to the lower right of the graph. So this would be a negative correlation, whereas this was a positive. If we don't tend to see any pattern, meaning we have values um, of small values of x corresponding with high values of y and vice versa, as we see here for verbal versus math scores, then there'd be no, no, there would be no clear correlation, or our R, which represents that, would be close to zero. Here, uh, the strongest negative correlation would be a negative one, and the strongest positive correlation would be a positive one. So when we see these graphs, we want to think about direction. Is there an overall pattern? Upper left, uh, lower left to upper right would be a positive correlation. Upper left to lower right would be a negative correlation. Uh, form, does there appear to be a line or a curve? You can see that these could be fit with a best fit line. What we're going to be doing here is all about a best fit line. However, there could be some relationships that would be better modeled with a curve. So we have to be careful to plot our data because we could get a value of R that's positive 1, for example, but our true relationship could be a curve, not linear, not a line. Um, and then are there clusters of values? So here we have clusters here and clusters up here. That also tells us something about the relationship that these values don't occur that often. So this is old faithful eruptions. So when uh, the duration of the eruption is in this range, uh, or maybe what it's telling us is that very rarely is the duration that long. Either it's a longer eruption or a shorter eruption. So we can get a lot of data or information from the data about if there are clusters or not. And then strength. The strength of the relationship would be, is there a clear form, uh, meaning do we clearly see that the data tends to increase together, or are there departures from it, meaning are there like outliers um, that are setting us off? And if we have outliers, it'll really change our residuals and how we calculate our best fit line. So overall here, we're taking our data, we're trying to determine the relationship between it, and help us make predictions. Um, help us determine what's already going on with the situation and can be used in any number of fields uh, for a lot of, in a lot of different ways. So keep in mind a positive association would mean the values of the two variables increase together as you see here we'll have a positive slope. A negative association means as values of our explanatory variable increase values of the uh, response variable decrease as you see here. So R, the variable R, up here measures the direction and strength of the linear relationship between our two variables. So it's always going to be between 1 and negative 1. 1 indicating a strong relationship, negative, uh, positive association, meaning uh, lower left, upper right, positive slope. Negative 1 indicating a strong negative association, meaning lower left, uh, upper left to lower right would be our best fit line. And that's explained here. Where in R is 0, there's no association. Um, values close to zero would be a weak association, and values close to one would be a strong positive association. Close to negative one would be a strong negative association. Okay, so strong association means it really seems like the explanatory variable uh, is causing a change in the response variable. 
there's a, a value close to zero it means there's not really a correlation there. We're not seeing changes in the explanatory variable lead to changes in the response variable. So um, R is calculated as you see up here. In your book, please refer to page 152 for this uh, same little blurb about the, the formula. So basically, uh, we have the summation of each value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, multiplying those two uh, and adding up as we go. So each point, the distance from the mean, and then dividing by n minus 1, n being the number of uh, sets of data in our sample size. Now be sure to check calculator functions online. I'll give you some copies of those in class too. Uh, but those have are updated with the chapter 3 stuff about calculating these things on your calculator. So uh, correlation is it's not necessarily telling us which one's explanatory and which one's the response. For example, we could have switched it up and we could find a strong correlation, but that doesn't mean that whatever we put on the x-axis is causing the change in the y-axis. It could be the other way around. Like we could have ha we could have our dependent variable on the x-axis and the independent on the y. Um, units of measurement uh, R is not affected by those because of the way this formula is set up. Um, outliers can greatly change the value of R. So if you plot this and see outliers, that's an important thing to pay attention to. We can never use categorical variables because they don't have numeric values. We need quantitative. Um, we can't measure curved relationships with this, uh, like an exponential relationship, just linear relationships, meaning a straight line. Um, be really careful when there's outliers in a set because it can throw off the value of R by a lot and throw off a best fit line. Correlation also doesn't give you a complete summary, so make sure to include mean and standard deviation of each data set. Okay, pause and take a minute to look at this blurb here. Uh, it's also on page 154 of your book, uh, talking about what correlation measures and giving you examples of how the calculator plots it here. Also, flip to the summary of our lesson on page 157 and go over that, and then uh, start the video again for a multiple choice question. So here's your multiple choice. What is the association and value of R for the scatter plot ab above? Now, all I want is whether it's negative, positive, or zero. So, is there a positive association? Uh, and what will R be, or is there a negative association? And then will R be positive, negative, or zero? So, go back on the video. Uh, the outline's also posted on Schoology and through your book. And then answer this multiple choice in the free response uh, by clicking on the button below.